hymns rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye to what we say. News, news, Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. News, news, Jesus Christ is born to this. He hath heard of heaven's door and ye are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. News, news, Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting call. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. Hark the herald angels sing. Hark the herald angels. Two, three, four. Oh. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace Let's finish our welcome song segment with everybody's favorite. Go tell it on the mountain. Oh, no. 
Welcome to Onalaska United Methodist Church on this, the fifth day of Christmas. Now, those of you that know the song know that uh, on the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five gold rings, all right, which makes a week from today the twelfth day of Christmas. And what do you get on the twelfth day of Christmas? Twelve lords a leaping. <laughs> so Merry Christmas to all of you. We're still in the season of Christmas. Don't put away the decorations quite yet, and we're celebrating Christmas today. In just a few moments, you'll have an opportunity to greet people around you and take a little extra time to say hello to someone that you don't know. Before you leave the service of worship today, uh, fill out the blue card that's in your bulletin to say that you're here, and if you're a new person to this service of worship, uh, make a little note that you'd like to know more about this church or just ask somebody around you uh, what's with Onalaska United Methodist Church. So with the uh, joy of the season, greet everybody in the peace of Jesus Christ. Good morning. Our scripture reading today is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This ends the reading. And the children are invited to come up for children's time. Well, good morning. Good morning. I see some jammies. I like it. We're going to have some fun today. So since it was jammy day, and it's after Christmas, I thought it'd be a perfect day to do a little story time for a children's sermon today. Has anyone read this book? It's called Emma's Gift. No? You read it at school. Oh, fantastic. Yeah? It's a really good book. So everyone can sit back and enjoy story time today. 
So it hadn't snowed in over two weeks, and now it was Christmas. Emma was very worried that there would not be any snow for Christmas morning. She stared out of the window, and if you guys want to have a better seat to see the pictures, you can sit down here. Stared out the window and hoped and hoped and hoped that she would see a flake of snow. No luck. Gee, this is the worst. In the kitchen, the phone rang, and Emma's mom picked up the phone. Emma didn't really pay much attention to it, but then Emma's mom came out to, from the kitchen, and she said, that was Mana on the phone. I'm afraid that it is snowing so hard at the airport that our plane can't take off, and she won't be here for Christmas morning. What? yelped Emma. First no so snow, and now no Mana. I think that's her grandmother. Christmas isn't Christmas without them. And she was... You think it's her? I think it's her grandma. She was very sad about that. I know, but to make it up to you, Mana said you could open up her present early. Must already have it there. So Emma's face lit up and she took off off the chair and went to find the Christmas gift from Mana. She weighed it and she gave it a little shake. Anybody shake the presents? Come on, be honest, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then in a flurry of ribbons and wrap, she unwrapped it. Under the layers of tissue, Emma found a rainbow scarf, rainbow mittens, and shiny red galoshes. And there was a note and it said, to my sweet Emma, to help you warm in the snow while we build our Christmas tradition, love, Mana. Now every year, Mana and Emma got up early on Christmas morning to make a snowman. And now, this Christmas, there was no snow, no snowman, snowman, and no Mana. Where was she? So she held out the, up the package again, snuggled with it, and again looked out the window and hoped for snow. Put out her, look, she put out her cookies for Santa and milk. Later, as mom tucked her into bed, she slept with her new scarf and mittens, but Mom made her take off the shiny red galoshes. And she dreamt of, what do you think? Snowmen, yes. In the morning, she woke, woke up, slipped on her galoshes, and sprinted downstairs to see if Santa came, and Santa had come. She got everything she wanted except for no snow and no mana. After all the gifts had been opened, Emma's mom asked her, to go into town and pick up some things. She needed to get a Christmas wreath. She didn't have a wreath yet. So she gave her some money, and Emma put on her new scarf and mittens and galoshes, and off she went. So she hadn't wanted The kitchen wasn't opening for hours. It was closed. But there was a thin man huddled up in the corner there, and he looked very cold. He was blowing on his hands to keep them warm. Do you guys ever do that when you're outside and you forget your mittens? You might blow on your hands to keep them warm? Yeah. She looked at her own hands and they were snugly warm inside those new mittens. You can see yourself up there, can't you? <laughs> oh, no. All right, so she took off her mittens. Now, she knew what she should do, but she knew she shouldn't speak to strangers. So she was trying to think, hmm, how can I give these mittens to this thin man who was very cold? So just then, a truck pulled up, and a man asked the thin man for directions. He had set down his, his backpack, so Emma went over and stuck the mittens on the backpack, and then she darted around the corner. She could see the look of delight on the man's face as he saw the mittens and slipped them on his hands. Merry Christmas, she whispered. Then she smiled to herself, pushed her hands deep in her pockets to keep them warm, and off she went. As she passed a small walkway between two buildings, she heard a scratching sound, kind of like that funny scratching sound. She, and then she heard a tiny meow. It's a cat. It's a cat. <laughs> what gave it away? <laughs> so 
She was, it was coming from a barrel placed under a pipe to catch water. Emma looked down in the barrel and she saw a shivering kitten stuck at the bottom. She tried to stick her arm in, but the kitten wouldn't, kitten wouldn't come. She couldn't quite reach, but then she had an idea. She took off her rainbow scarf that was keeping her neck warm, put it down into the barrel, and then she dangled it and the little, little kitten grabbed onto it. And she lifted the little kitten out of the barrel. Well, as she was doing that, she heard a lady behind her yelling, Tabby, Tabby. So Emma turned around and saw a lady in her bathrobe. She looked very worried. She was yelling, Tabby. And then the kitten meowed again, and the woman turned around quickly, and she was relieved and delighted and happy to see her Tabby. Emma could see she was so thankful that she had found her kitty cat. That she, the lady said to Emma, it's just her and I for Christmas. I don't know what I would do without her. So Emma gave her tabby back, all wrapped in her rainbow scarf. Finally, she reached the Christmas wreath stand, and that's what her mom had sent her to get. There was a boy younger than Emma by the Christmas trees, or by the wreaths, excuse me. She reached to give her money to the, to the boy for a wreath and noticed that the boy had a big hole in his shoe. He was kind of embarrassed by that, so he was tucking his foot behind his other foot so that she couldn't see the hole in his shoe. Why don't your parents get you a new pair of shoes, she asked the boy. Well, dad got hurt and lost his job. My mom is selling Christmas wreaths to help us get, have money to get by. And she's in right now taking care of my dad, so I'm helping her out. Oh, she stared down at her feet with her shiny new galoshes. She looked at that last item that Mana had given her, and she took them off. These galoshes are much too tight on me, but I bet they would fit you just right, she said. But you don't even know me. Why would you give me your galoshes? The boy asked Emma. Just think of it as a Christmas present, Emma said, smiling as she slipped those off and handed them to the boy. I don't know how to thank you. Put them on, er, Emma urged. As she, and as he did, his face lit up. Merry Christmas. She handed the boy the quarter and took a wreath home. Then she stomped her feet, turned, to the collar of, turned up the collar of her court, coat, she's probably kind of chilly, and stuck those hands deep in her pockets again, and started to walk home. As she walked, she noticed a bus was coming down the street, and the bus stopped and a lady got out. Mana looked, and then she shook her head, and looked again. Well, Mana, she cried as she ran across the town square. Mana opened her arms and swept Emma off her feet and hugged her and hugged her and hugged her some more. How did you get here, asked Emma. Well, said Mana, I could not miss Christmas with my sweet Emma, and since I couldn't fly, I took the all-night bus. She looked at Aunt Emma, but where are your gifts? Emma stared down, stared down at her feet and said, Mana, I gave them away. Gave them away, asked Mana, didn't you like them? Oh yes, I love them, but as they walked home, Emma told Mana all about the thin little man in the soup kitchen Tabby the lost kitten and the boy at the Christmas wreath stand with a hole in his sneaker. Mana listened and when Emma had finished, they had reached the front door and she said, Emma, I am so proud of you. Proud, asked Emma, I gave away your gifts. But you are the greatest gift of all, said Mana as they hugged each other. Emma felt warmer than she had ever with her mittens or the scarf or the shiny red galoshes. And just then it started to snow. That was a good story, wasn't it? The author finishes with a passage from Luke 6, chapter, chapter 6, verse 38. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap for the measure you give will be the measure you give back. So, amen. We are going to head down to the art room for some fun crafts and maybe some Pop-Tarts. Does that sound good to anybody? Yeah. yeah, okay. Let's go.
Thank you for the story, Jessica, that reminds us Christmas is all about giving. Not just what we receive, but what we give to others. We come to a time of prayer in our service of worship this morning, and it's only appropriate that we would share joys and concerns with others. And if you have a joy or a concern, uh, just raise your hand. I'll pass the microphone to you, and you can uh, share it with the congregation. If it's something you'd rather not share, uh, you can write it on the blue card, and it will be shared in prayer time during the week. But the blue card then goes in the offering as the offering comes around later. Is there anyone with a joy or concern that they would like to share this morning? Two joys. First of all, Corey got some really good health news this week. And second, my mother goes home to her apartment tomorrow. <laughs> Those are two good joys. Prayers for our military men and women around the world our law enforcement, and those who serve us on a daily basis. Thank you for that reminder, Jack. God, we give you thanks for the blessing of sharing Christmas with our grandson, Nathan, and for the love, support, prayers, and mail that he has received from many of you in the congregation and community friends and neighbors. Thank you. We have a joy this morning. Um, our daughter Trina and our son Brian and their families are here with us to celebrate Christmas. And we're glad to have them and wish them safe travels home. They've been with us for a couple of days and we still have cookies left. <laughs> Our granddaughter had an embryo transferred on Friday in prayers that the baby takes. Prayers for my daughter-in-law who lost her father this fall and is having a really high, hard time recovering from it. So prayers for Sarah. I'd like to pray for April and John Robert and those struggling with addiction. And I'd also like prayers for myself as I'm facing a third hip revision on Tuesday. And I'd like to pray for the surgeon doing the surgery and bless all those that will be involved in my care. Um, I'd just like to thank you um, for my wonderful kids and ask also for traveling mercies as I drive home to Richmond tomorrow. Last week we asked you for prayers for our niece Beth. Update, she's doing well. And she's walking, taking nourishment, but she's going to be in the hospital for three months. Thank you for your prayers. But she had a heart transplant on the 21st, was it? I think. Thank you much. Thank you, Russ. Let's all join together in prayer, first of all, in silent prayer. In this season of joy, O oh God, we have much to be thankful for. And when we've worshiped this past week, it has been because of the birth of a baby and the revelation of your great love through Jesus Christ. And so we do give thanks. And we pause to remember the spirit of Christmas and ask that it would be with us every day of the year. But even in this season, when there is so much joy and sharing, there are people that are struggling. You've heard prayers for people that have had very serious surgery and their prayers for their recovery, for people that are facing surgery, and prayers for the doctors that are doing the surgery. You've heard prayers for people that need to be recovering from various afflictions and illnesses and concern for others. 
And so in this body that's gathered together with the spoken and unspoken prayers, we understand that uh, Christmas is not just praying for ourselves, but praying for those we love and praying for those that surround us. And so hear our prayers, especially as they are for others. We pray also for our world, for the many conflicts that are seemingly bubbling up every day. We know that that message of love, hope, and peace, which came almost 2,000 years ago with the birth of Jesus, is still one that can work today. And we ask that we might be those people, one by one, that live to bring peace to areas that are often without it. As we look forward to the days ahead, as we look forward to a new year, might our New Year's resolutions revolve around the message of Christ and Christmas and the love of God as we move forward in the name of God. We pray all of this and much more that has been unspoken in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to say when they pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forevermore. Amen. Did you have a joyous Christmas? Pretty good Christmas? Santa Claus good to you? I'd like to share a couple of old words with you this morning because they're found in the Christmas story over and over again. And they're words that we really should pay some attention to because they speak to each and every one of us. And the first word is just simply joy. Why I ask you if you had a joyous Christmas. Do you know what hymn is celebrating its uh, 300th anniversary this year? Joy to the world, and it's the last uh, hymn we're going to sing today as we go forth, Joy to the World. If you look in the Advent story, and if you look in the Christmas stories, they talk about joy. They talk about joy for Mary. They talk about joy for Zechariah. They talk about joy for Anna. The shepherds responded with joy. The magi responded with joy. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. My question for us this morning, at least my first question, is how do you live joyously? How do you live joyously? And I'll give you a little clue. It's not uh, skipping down the street throwing rose petals like a bridesmaid at a wedding. But think about it. How do you live joyously? Second word I want to introduce to you is fear. It's a part of the Advent story and the Christmas story as well. When the angels talked, and uh, by the way, you know all about angels, don't you? How many of you think they have wings? <laughs> there is not any indication in the Bible that says that angels have wings, <laughs> in spite of what we do in popular culture. Uh, how many of you think they're women? <laughs> they're always men in the Bible. Now we can do whatever we want to say this is an angel, but an angel is a messenger from God. And when the angels spoke to the shepherds, 
or when Gabriel spoke to Mary, did so as a messenger. And usually the reaction was they were what? Afraid. And the angel usually said, don't be afraid, fear not. There are a lot of things to be afraid of in this world today, aren't there? You heard some of them during prayer time. A lot of fears that can rise up, sometimes uh, very substantiated, sometimes not, sometimes just imagined by us. But I can tell you one thing, I'm, I personally am really tired of people trying to tell me what I should be afraid of. That I should be afraid of uh, people that are different than I am. Which is everybody in the world, actually. Because <laughs> we're all unique and we're all people that uh, have our own stamp of the holy on us. I'm told I should be afraid from people of other colors that don't look exactly like me. Or that come from other countries. Or that might vote for a candidate that is different than the one I might vote for or that are different gender. And the list can go on and on and on. In the Christmas story that tells us we should be joy-filled, we're also told that we should not be afraid. And so it's a good time to think about our fears. Often those fears are well substantiated. But as we think about them, to hear the words, not just from the Christmas story, but all throughout Jesus' ministry. Don't be afraid. I'm with you always. And so, the first question, how do we live joyously? And the addendum to it, how do we live without fear? Or at least, how can we control our fears? What's the holiday that's coming up this week? New Year's, New Year's. How many of you are gonna make resol resolutions for New Year's? <laughs> Do you think it's an accident that New Year's falls during Christmas? Now Christmas historically has had 12 days. And so Christmas isn't over until next Sunday. And New Year's is this Wednesday, so that makes Christmas today the 5th, Monday the 6th, the 7th. Ah, New Year's is the 8th day of Christmas. Those of you that know the song, which one is that? Eight maids milking, right. <laughs> How do we make resolutions that are joy-filled and overcome our fears? John Wesley had some ideas. Now, I didn't grow up in the Methodist Church. I grew up in the Evangelical Church, which then became the Evangelical United Brethren Church. And the people, which at that time were all men, that were the giants of the church were Martin Baim, and Philip Albright and Otterbein, Otterbein, Bain, and Albright. You don't hear much about them, do you? Oh, relax, I'm not going to share what they had to say with you this morning, but when you get a time, you might just uh, look at what they had to say uh, since they were so similar to John Wesley, you might be surprised how they were in lockstep. But John Wesley had what was called Wesley's Manifesto. Any of you ever been to the Bristol Chapel in England? That's where the Wesley Historical Museum is, the Wesley Museum. And on the wall is Wesley's Manifesto. None of you have been there, have you? And I haven't either. I can't say it's a place you have to go to before you die, but I can read to you what's on that wall. Twelve things taken from John Wesley's sermons. 
Now, John Wesley was a prolific writer, and he not only wrote theology, he wrote about books about health, he wrote about history, he cranked out books like crazy. But he had a very real concern for joyous living and living without fear. Here's what his manifesto says. The followers of John Wesley should do this. Number one, now this is the 1700s, not the 2000s. Number one, reduce the gap between rich people and poor people. Number two, help everyone to have a job. Number three, help the poorest, including introducing a living wage. These are all from his sermons. Number four, offer the best education possible. Number five, help everyone feel they can make a difference in the world. Number six, promote tolerance. Number seven, promote equal treatment for women. Number eight, create a society based on values, not on profits and consumerism. Number nine, end all forms of slavery. Number 10, avoid getting into wars. Number 11, share the love of God with everyone you know. And 12, care for the world around you. If you're looking for New Year's resolutions, these are some pretty good resolutions. And isn't this what it means to live joyously? It doesn't mean that you laugh all the time, that you skip down the street. It means that you live positively. It means that you live not only for yourself, but for others. And it means you not be afraid as you live that way. And so as you come to Christmas Eve and start thinking about New Year's resolutions, these are some good ones. As you remember that New Year's resolutions are a part of the Christmas story, and that the Christmas story is all about God's gift to us through Jesus Christ, it'll help you focus on what it means to live joyously and how to do that without being afraid. And so as we travel to New Year's, remember we are God's people and the Christmas message is alive in us and should be every day this year. Go forth and live joyously. Join me for a word of prayer. Oh God, we thank you for this season of Christmas. And at the start of a new year, we understand we have a new opportunity to reclaim and share the Christmas message that Jesus came to save and that we are saved and reach out to others through the love and grace and peace of Christ our Lord. Help us to live joyously and to not be afraid, for you are with us always. Amen. Please join us as we sing a trio of meditative songs, starting with Lo How a Rose Blooming, verses 1 and 2.
to show God's love arise. She bore to us a Savior, when her strength was the night. Still one of our favorites, Away in the Manger. As the ushers come forward to receive the morning's offering, let us remember that the greatest gift came to us through Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here in worship this morning and for reaffirming that uh, 
love is here, and that love did come down at Christmas. Some of you had uh, ordered poinsettias for the church, and you can see them around. They were beautiful this season of Christmas. Uh, you may pick up the ones that you paid for and take it home with you today. And uh, we thank you very much for making that a part of our uh, Christmas scenery and the decor of the congregation. Also, thank you for uh, Zoe and Corey and uh, all that have helped in the morning service of worship. I, uh, of course, did not ask how many of you actually came at 8.30 this morning. And please don't say anything to anybody that walks in at 10.30 for the 11 o'clock service. But uh, glad you came to say that uh, Christmas is an important time of year. Are there any other announcements that uh, should be shared this morning? You can take your bulletin home with you and you can read the announcements that are in the bulletin, uh, paste it on your refrigerator, wherever is convenient for you, and see what's happening in the church as we look into the new year. I'm going to ask us to uh, stand now as we sing our closing songs. We'll sing two verses of Angels from the Realms of Glory. Angels from the realms of glory wing your flight o'er all the earth. He who sang creation story thou proclaimest Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the field abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the new. And verses 1 and 2 of the first Noel. Nature sing joy to the world verses one through four.
nature sing and have them let nature sing and have and have and nature sing joy to the world the savior reign let all their songs employ what fields and floods rocks fields and plain repeat the sunday go repeat the sunday go and he repeat the sounding door. No more let sins and sorrows roar. No thorns infest the ground. He comes to break his blessings flow. Far as the curse is gone, far as the curse is gone, far as, far as. How many of you would uh, call yourselves evangelicals? All of you should be raising your hand. <laughs> because uh, being an evangelical isn't what you hear on the news, and I heard it again last night. Uh, the evangelicals say, well, evangelical comes from the word in Greek that means good news. And we all are asked to share good news and live good news, live joyously. And if you forget what living joyously is about, or if you forget what the good news is about, reread the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, especially the Beatitudes. We all are people that are asked to share the good news of Jesus' birth and Jesus coming into the world to show us how to live, how to treat others, how to be treated by others, and then do the same ourselves. So let us go forth joyously as bearers of the good news, as evangelicals, people that are followers of Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Amen.